Okay, now on the second part of chapter three, where I where I'm going to explain you how to configure and fine tune uh, a parking position, I'm going to use this example because it's uh, this is the scenery that just came out in Brussels. Uh, I think it's pretty nice because uh, the one we used to have until now, it was a pretty bad one, and uh, I think it was uh, something of, of FSX uh, scenery with a very bad quality. Now this one just came out by Jasim. It's uh, compared to the other one, it's amazing. I think it needs a lot of work still because, for example, uh, going back to uh, the configuration and what we talked about before is that uh, the docking the, the docking system kind of defines uh, on how we're going to configure a jetway. Uh, sorry, a parking position with all its objects around and so forth. Now you see that this one. Sorry about this. There you go. Now this one has its own docking uh, system, but it's not re it's not a real one. I play I place the the plane here so you could see from the cabin that it doesn't have any indications whatsoever. It's just a picture there. So this is one that we would have to uh, create anyway, a docking device that we will have to create anyway. So we're going to tell them to go there. And uh, sorry, one second of all. Now this is the option that I would love to have on the main menu, which is a warping. It says warping the plane or something like that. You see here it says uh, uh, slash jetway. Now if that were were to be a real docking system, it would have an uh, sort of like a specification of what kind of a, uh, docking system it is. You're going to see like, later on that when we place around, it's going to change the name of the jetway. Of the parking position. Now, if we press here and we press just warp me here, it would place the plane on the stop position, not on the parking position, but on the stop position. That's the key we should have on number eight here. That's the one I wish we had. Okay. Now, you see that all the jetways. I mean, I've already done some configuration on this uh, scene on this scenery, so I'm just going to use the one I already have and uh, move the objects around so you can understand how it works, okay? But this way we won't start from scratch because it's a lot of work and uh, it takes too much time and uh, it's the only way to explain it fast. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to customize this parking position and we're going to press here the select all parking. We're going to go to the gates and we're going to go, see it has also parking positions, but we're not interested on those, we're just interested on the gates. And we're going to filter the ones with jetways. See, it sh that should change, but it, it doesn't work very well. But if you can, if you play around it and you press it here, it's just going to highlight all the possible jetways that you have on that area. Now, we're, the common element to all of them is that you don't have parking system. We're going to tell him to put this one here to see if it's the right size. No, it's not. That I knew already because it's the same case as Madrid. And we're going to use this one. And that might be the right one. Okay. Now, um, unfortunately, and this is uh, something we can't fight with, it doesn't place it on top of it. So you're going to go and have to go get a jetway by jetway and parking position by jet, uh, parking position placing it on the right spot, okay? You're going to have to go into every parking position anyway, as I will explain you in a minute. Now, by doing this, you probably see that it has added a park a docking device on every parking position. If we go here, okay, using the Y key, so we kind of place it. No, it's not bad. I mean, it has done a good job here. Yeah, it's done great. So we wouldn't have to move around that object anymore. And just to see and just to prove that this works, we're going to go back to the here and ask him to, we want to go to, see, he has changed the name of the jetway having the save dock on top of it with the copyright on it. Now, we don't want to warp the plane, we just want to see how it works. And see, now it goes operational.
Now, if we start moving forward, it already detects we are on an Airbus 320. We're a bit to the left. Okay, now we're center, and we're going to go forward until it says stop, okay? Okay, so we're practically on the zero, zero position, and if we go outside and we customize this parking position and we go and see the parking position, it's going to jump backwards, but now, since we're using the artificial intelligence of our own docking device, we can tell him that the stop position, it is, we're not going to touch around at all the parking position, but we're going to, by pressing F4, we're going to put the stop position where the start position is, the parking position is, and that draws it from, as I explained before, from the AFCAD file and from the go to airport. Let me just explain one other thing I forgot to explain you before, in order to know which AFCAD uh, file you're using, it also shows here, okay? And that's the that's the whole directory and the, uh, the path of your uh, AFCAD file. Now, as I explained, we're going to make sure that the parking position and the stop position are the same. Now, we're going to ask him, oops, we're playing around with the this thing here with the part with the now we're going to go to the stop position and we're going to tell him to move all the way to the parking position okay now in this case as i explained since we're using hold on a second it has to still go backwards approximately up to here and it's not the same, it's right there, a bit to the front. Okay, now that's the stop. So now in this case, the stop position, the parking position are the same. And that can be the case only because we're using our own docking uh, system, okay? It uses the artificial intelligence from GSX Level 2 and it will decide where to stop the plane and where to tell you to stop the plane from this position right here, the stop position, okay? Now, see, I don't like the way that it's, okay, let's go into, see, this is the parking, now the pushback, okay, this is, we're, now we're going to operate this thing here, which is the parking system. We're going to go and move it upwards. If we do the Q letter and the Z letter, we're going to go up or down, and if we use the arrows, we're going to use left, front, backwards, and frontwards. Okay, so that's, for me, it's probably the best position I can have for the, our docking device. Now, now, the good thing about this is that since we have only one parking position, starting and ending position, now, for us to check if the jetways are going to be valid for our parking position, we can test this either in the jetway position. Sorry, we press number five. It's going to tell us that this jetway can attend to door number one L. See again, it says right here, the jetway resolves the left forward cabin door, one left. And... Um, but we can also test it on the parking on the parking position, which is this one here. It would say exactly the same thing because the plane has not moved. Now, you can mess around with uh, all these, you know, the, the different objects. This is the pushback truck. Sometimes it leaves the, the plane on the, the, the objects on the wrong position. So I've done all the job with Brussels already. You can find all my sceneries configurations on the link below. I've explained, I think already, that the ones that says full category will be fully finished. And that would be 100% true by the weekend, by this next weekend, because I'm going to change the docking system of all the ones I had to option number three, 
configuration model number three that I explained before. So by the weekend of uh, this uh, this following weekend, uh, Sunday, the f I think it's the 17th or something like that of October 2018, all the ones that are in the full category will ha all have the right docking system and only one parking position. Now, all the sceneries that I'm sharing with you, it's approximately between 35 and 40 sceneries. They will all be in the full category by the end of the month or beginning of November. But in the forum uh, link that I put in the link below of this tutorial, you'll find information and uh, news regarding when they'll all be finished. Now, if you've installed a, pre a previous configuration of mine that is not 100%, Perfect. Don't worry because if you add the, the newest one, the newest configuration and fully finished, just overwrite the one to three files that GSX deals with on the instructions that I attach and uh, just overwrite the prior ones and it will just give you the best configuration or the latest configuration. And the, the dates on the configuration files, you, they are on the names, on the, on the, num, on the dates of the files themselves. Now let's start with uh, placing the objects. I mean you can move, I'm sure you can see that by now by using the arrow keys. You can move the objects. Um, only in the jetways you can use F or F2 or F3 to change the color. You see if I press F2 it will change the color. F3 will go back to the previous color. If I press F5 or F6, F6 will increase, will go to the next jetway model, usually goes to the bigger uh, size or smaller size, or change the model altogether. Now, you can also change the position of the jetway by pressing F7 or F8. And there's one thing that is important. Now, once the, all the objects are placed, placed on the right position, we exit the configuration by pressing Y. And we go back to the, the menu, the configuration menu. Now, I'm going to go through the different options here so you can understand. Some of them are pretty relevant. Now, in this, I chose Brussels because it's one of the... Okay, I, I saw a comment on the forum of some guys asking me if this airport already has a soda jetways, why do I mess around with it and why do I change their jetways? Now... First of all, <laughs> let me make clear, you're not obligated to use mine. If you like the ones that come with the default scenery, uh, just don't install my configuration. You won't have this, this uh, docking system and you, it would not be as nice. Okay. Um, now, I also had, uh, I, I tested the jetways that came with the scenery, the default ones with Sode, and I couldn't see for some reasons in the glass uh, jetways, I couldn't see the passengers walk through it, uh, but th that might just be my case. I don't know if it works for you, just use yours. Now, the second thing why uh, I wanted to use Brussels is because on the heavy gates, we're going to see later on, uh, it only has one jetway and I added a second jetway. Okay, so it that kind of improves the, what you find on the default scenery. Now, once I've exited the customization and I'm in this menu, here says the, si the type of gate there is. This comes from the AFCA. Don't mess around with that. It has no consequence whatsoever, but it's just leave it the way it is because it's actually a small, a small jetway. Now, to do the configurations on the small jetways, on the small parking place, I use an Airbus 320 on the on the heavy ones. I use a 747. Now on the medium ones, I only fly seven. Uh, you know the PMDG, uh, the 787, 789. You can use a 789. That's probably the most medium one uh, that I have to configure the right position of the objects. I think that's pretty important that you don't uh, use a 747 to configure a small. And the other one around. So now the sec the second thing I touch I pl I put here 70 meters so I don't get the annoying message that this parking space is too small for your plane. In the chapter five I believe it is there's a chapter on errors. This is the classic error. So this takes care of that. You can do that in the global customization. Now 
The next one, I'm not going to... Okay, now, the, this is the parking radius uh, in meters, in left, and to the right. And I'm going to explain this because it's very important. Now, if I go into the customization of the jetway, okay, you see that there's a circle around the plane. Now, that's the radius of the plane, okay? You might find when you uh, enter the configuration of one of your sceneries that you're going to find by default all your vehicles that are right beneath the plane and you're going to have to start moving all of them far away and you know the the arrows keys that move the objects they're kind of slow i wish they had an option to move them fast so if you have to move the objects far away and all of them is going to be time consuming so that's why they have the option of radius if you change the radius of the plane of the of the parking position that means it's not going to place any of the objects of the trolleys of the stairs and so forth they're not going to be placed anywhere inner of this circle right here so if you find yourself in a situation where all these vehicles are placed under the plane or you know that you have to move all the objects a lot just change this by pressing f5 or f6 you know it makes it smaller or it makes it larger so let's let's make it really small this is the case i was referring to to the smallest size possible now if i exit the customization and i go back to the parking see it's going to move all the objects closer to you now since i've already configured uh, some of the parking positions of the objects of the of the ground troops it has only moved this one because it was the default one the other ones have been messing around with but if i if i hadn't do any configuration on this particular parking space all the vehicles would be right under the plane now if i change this again let's say let's say i go to f6 and i mess around and i tell him that i need to be all the vehicles far far away from me i don't want them to be close to me okay i press again y to exit and I go back again by customize parking and you see it has moved the ones that I didn't mess around with it has moved them far away from the circle these ones are my custom positions so these ones has left them where I configured them but this one you see it has moved them far away so we're gonna place it back to the original position which I believe it was somewhere around there and that will move backwards to the right position which is right there and that's good enough for me because it's out of the road and so forth now that's another thing we've learned about which is the radius and now uh, the pushback directions now both it's the right one for this one because you can push back in either of the two directions to the left and to the right and um, if you had a situation where like in for example in here that you have you know planes that are, can only go in one direction that should have only one direction because the plane can only taxi in one direction so if we go back to the menu here we see that this is correct now in some cases you might find that that's not properly configured just choose if you want both left or right now in the last chapter i will go into detail with this because this is when you find yourself that the pushback uh, of your plane when you choose left or right whatever the options you're given it does not leave you the plane on the right pushback place that it should it's kind of complicated because you have to go work with an editor of uh, of uh, like something like uh, Af uh, AFCAD editor to find out what are the proper coordinates. You will have to put the latitude and the longitude here. We'll explain that on the last, very last chapter of the tutorial, and we're not going to go with it at this moment. Now, here you can choose if you want a cargo loader, which is the one that uses uh, this one here. Let me show you. These are the cargo loaders and uh, if we you know if we go up here and we customize the parking it has switched between these trolleys 
and the belt trolleys, okay? So we know what that is for. And now we can go to, uh, this was the option we pressed to exclude the radius. This is just to customize all the vehicle locations, you know, the, the ground troops. Now, I always use GSX Jetway. If I have two Jetways for heavy positions, I call them one inner and the other one outer. Here is a different types of uh, Jetways you can use. These are the colors. And um, the same for the bridges. We're not using bridges here. Bridges is the extension that you can have uh, to a Jetway to make it even longer. Ground markings, if we want ground markings on the on the scenery. This one has its own. We don't want them anymore. So uh, I do want air conditioning and power unit and uh, I do want this logo and I do want the gate number and the colors. You can choose them by the font and by the background color and I tend to use the one that are in the symbols on the floor or if you had one over there like you do. I used to have, I tend to use the same. You see it's yellow and black, so I, I just kind of use the same one. Now, uh, FSDT tells you not to put numbers here if you have one over there, but in certain sceneries, that number there does not have any light. So at night, you cannot see it. So I tend to put always one on the jetway. And this is pretty much it regarding the fine tuning. Um, so yeah, the the next chapters will explain other issues of um, uh, how do you call this of uh, GSX level two. I hope this explained pretty much everything regarding the configuration of GSX level two. Once you've made the changes that you wanted, uh, just uh, close this uh, menu here. There's certain things, let's say, uh, like what I did before with the jetways, with uh, selecting all the jetways here. And if you want to do something common, let's say you've changed the color of one jetway here and you want to do it with all the jetways, you can do a global filtering of all the jetways and change the colors and apply. It would apply to all the jetways so you would save time when you go and fine tune every single parking position. Now, let's say I'm in jetway number, four, I'm in parking position number 14 number 140, sorry, and I want to go to the next uh, parking position, you can do that by just selecting the next one and customize parking. Or if you're customizing the parking, see now it takes me to the next one, and you want to jump to the next parking position, you can just press number seven or nine, and it will go to the next numeric parking position. This is uh, the case that I was telling you about, that you would have only one parking uh, direction, okay? one par uh, parking uh, pushback direction. So uh, this is all for chapter th three, part two, and uh, I hope you understood everything. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, you'll find a link below with uh, the web page for the forum of FS uh, Dream Team on the customization of different uh, sceneries that I offer. Bye-bye.